Hello everyone, in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to finally revisit the source rect at time expression. I make this comment every time, but uh, see, I actually do make videos based on the requests that people put in the comments. In my last video on this topic, we made rectangles that automatically resize to text. Some classic source rect at time stuff. But many people asked, well, what if I want the text to come in from the right, or from the left, or what do we do about these descenders, or so many things. There were so many things kind of janky about that method. So in this tutorial, we're going to answer those problems, and we're going to help you get your text locked down. So in the old tutorial, what you'd do is you'd type out some text and and this box would automatically resize. How does it do that? Well, inside this layer, we've got contents, we've got a rectangle, we've got a rectangle path, it's got a size, and that size, we've used an expression to link it to this text over here. So the expression we used says a, setting up a variable named a, and that's equal to this comp dot layer dot source rect at time. So we're saying, look inside this comp, look inside this text layer, and then look at its source rect at time. Then we set up a couple of variables, height, which is equal to a dot height, and width, which is equal to a dot width, which is basically saying append dot height and dot width onto the end of source rect at time. So with the height and width defined, we then have a p equals slider control. So we've got a little slider control on here that we use to adjust the padding. We just pick whip p equals that. And then finally, we have an output of x equals width plus p and y equals height plus p. And then we go x comma y. And that gives us a box that's exactly the same size as the text. So we write new things out. They both resize. But the trouble comes when we need to go left or right or center and it just starts breaking things. So we could always go well to the left and then put this in the middle and then type out something new. But as you saw, that didn't really, uh, it continues to not line up super well. So what's happening here? Why is this breaking? Well, the reason is because the text is always relative to its baseline. And the baseline is defined by the paragraph here. So this is saying, well, we're going to be uh, going out from the center here. There's a little point and all the text is going to be centered on that. Or if we go over here to the left, then everything's going to be going to the left of that or to the right of that. Thankfully, it happens to line up with where the anchor point is. So whenever we're shifting this around, the text is actually sliding around behind that anchor point. What we need to do is lock down that anchor point. We need to make sure that this text is always going to be where we expect it to be. How would we make that happen? I'm going to hold down Alt, click on the anchor point here, and I would start typing a bunch of things, but I want to be copying and pasting to save us some time. What we have here is A equals this comp dot layer dot source rect at time, which is still pointing at the same layer. We could say this layer dot source rect at time. That would be fine as well. And we still need the height and width. We don't really need the padding, so we'll get rid of that. And this X and Y is going to change. Those are going to be very, very different things. So we need two more variables to make use of this stuff. We need the left and the top. The left is going to be the distance between that baseline and the leftmost bound of this box. So we just say A dot left, a little semicolon there. And the top is the distance from the baseline up to the very top. It's different from the height because if you have letters like P's or Q's, then it's not measuring the descender of the P and the Q. It's only baseline to top. So top is gonna to equal A dot top. And these are all the components that you can dredge out of the source rect at time. All right, so let's get into some math. Let's get that anchor point locked down in the center middle. How do we do that? Well, we're gonna go X equals, then we're gonna type out left, just like our variable left, and then we're gonna to add to that the width divided by two. Now you don't need to put any parentheses around here, any of those brackets, because the division is going to happen before the addition, because we're obeying the rules of math around here. But that should stick the anchor point right in the horizontal center. So now we're going to do the same thing for the Y. We're going to say top plus height divided by two. And this should get the vertical right in the middle. Hit return, and would y'all look at that? I nailed it. It is indeed doing as advertised. It is sticking this stuff right in that middle center that way, middle center that way, line it up oh so good. So now that's locked in there. So what does that mean? Well, have a look at these numbers for the anchor point over here. And as I change to right, left, 
and center, the text stays right where it is, but the values are changing. And that's because all the math is working to stick this anchor point right where we expect it every time. So that's pretty good. However, everything is center aligned now. We've basically forced everything to be center aligned and that's not great. We still have a little bit more work to do because we still want things to be relative to whether it's left, center, or right aligned. And one of the easiest ways to do that, I've found, is to just parent this text onto its rectangle, onto this thing that's going to be resizing for it. And we'll use the anchor point of that shape layer to get everything where we want it. So I'm going to hold down Alt, click on the anchor point, and we're going to type something out here. Actually, what we're going to type out is going to be uh, making use of that earlier anchor point typing. It's always important to save time when you can, because I still need all of these basic components. I'm still looking at the same text layer. I still need the height, width, left, and top. It's just the math that's going to be radically different. So instead, I'm going to go width divided by negative 2 minus left. And then for the height, I'm going to go height divided by negative 2 minus top, basically undoing what we did before. So when I go ahead and I hit return, you'll notice everything kind of springs to a different location. But have a look at this anchor point. If I go to the text layer and I say, go to the center. Oh, look at that. The whole thing shifts. And now it's all in the center. I can go from the right. I can go to the left, to the left, all of your text in a box to the left. And if we start typing, if I type new things, it types out just the same way text did, typing from the left, but now it's got this box behind it. Now, this tutorial would not be complete if we didn't also animate this stuff. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go here, I'm going to click in the text, we're going to go animate, we'll go scale, we could do that, and uh, we're going to animate the scale down to zero. Notice what happens when there's no pixel information in this layer. As we've crunched it all down to zero, now the rectangle is also resized. I'm going to just keyframe the range selector here. So it's going to go, it's going to end at 100%. It's going to start at 0%. And watch how this animates on. It starts with a little weird square over here. And then suddenly it snaps to be over there. Now that's because of all the math that's going on, causing that to happen. If you don't want that little anomaly to happen, just uh, start this at like 1%, and then uh, no one will ever notice. It'd be uh, pretty unnoticeable how that goes. If we wanted to animate, say, from right to left, as if we were just typing, and we were typing in a word processor or something, and, and the text is coming out, you'd think, oh, let's just shift the paragraph to be over like so, right? So let's grab here and click that shift the paragraph, well, that actually wouldn't, wouldn't change anything because where everything is is being determined by this line right here. So what you'd need to do is just change this from negative to positive, just like Pitbull did with his lifestyle, I think. And there you go. So now, whoop, now it's typing out from that side. Okay. You want it to go from the center? Well, just replace this with zero. And whoop, now it's in the middle and whoop, comes out like that easy stuff. Something else that's worth considering, though, is what if you want the text to animate, but you don't really want this to update. You just want it to have the final size, the final volume that it's going to end up as. Well, Source Rect at Time has the ability to add that in. You're able to make this kind of timeless. By default, Source Rect at Time is always reading the current time. So all you need to do is go in here and type in whatever the time would be. So let's say this is going to resolve by two seconds. We can go two, comma, and then, you know, true. We're answering the other part of the argument, which is whether this looks at the layer's extents. So just copy that, drop it down here also. So now that shouldn't resize at all. See, it's going to just hang out exactly where it needs to be. And this just fills up the size. But the size is still dynamic, so whatever we put in is going to be typed in there. So that is generally how you get a lock on this stuff. Hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully this opens up new ways of thinking about the source rect at time, thinking about your text, working with templates, and really giving you some control over what's going on. Hopefully this opens up new ideas for expressions, gets you thinking about coding in new ways. 
gets you thinking about layers relative to each other in new ways. And even if most of the stuff can be done with scripts, maybe it uh, just helps you learn the program a bit better. If you had trouble with this stuff, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to get you through. If you enjoy learning about this kind of thing, then subscribe to the channel. Talk about After Effects, motion design, VFX, all that good stuff right here on the EC Abrams channel. I try to get out new videos every week, but make sure you're subscribed and you have notifications on so you'll know when that really happens. If you want to get your hands on the project file, check out the cards, check out the description. That'll get you to the project file that we just worked on. Then you can dissect this if you really want to. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you subscribe to the channel, then I'll see you around the internet. Thanks again and have a great day.